Mr. Comptroller General, what is the total amount of improper payments that GAO estimates were made last year across the federal government? Last year across the federal government, the cumulative total of the estimates made by the agencies was $247 billion. Mm. Now, I don't believe, Mr. Chairman, I might add, if I might, the, that estimate's not complete. There are a number of programs that were not, estimates were not made, like the Pandemic Unemployment <clears throat> Insurance Program. Since 2003, these estimates have totaled uh, $2.3 trillion. This is a, a trend that was a problem before the pandemic. It got wow. worse during the pandemic. $2.3 trillion. So since 2000, it'd be roughly $2.5 trillion? That, uh, yes. $2.5 trillion. What, yeah. what are the worst programs for improper payments over that time? Over that time, um, you have Medicaid program uh, has the highest total for the last couple of years, $98 billion in 21, uh, $80 billion in 2022. The uh, Medi Medicare program uh, is about $47, $49 billion over the last two years. The unemployment insurance program at $78 billion in 21, about $19 billion in 22. Uh, unemployment insurance uh, no, excuse me, the um, earned income tax credit uh, mm -hmm. has been about $18 uh, billion a year. And then in 2022, which is the first year, uh, the uh, emergency loan programs at uh, SBA were a $36 billion estimate. We encouraged them to make that estimate. They didn't make it in 21, but they made it in 22. That, that's sickening. L last Congress, we heard from you about the need for more oversight over pandemic relief funds. Uh, as you testified at the 2021 high-risk hearing, and I quote, when you're spending close to a trillion dollars, you also need good accountability and transparency, end quote. And guess what Congress did with that important advice that you gave this committee? It rushed out another $1.9 trillion in alleged pandemic relief. But Congress didn't stop there. Congress also spent another $2 trillion of taxpayer dollars in Green New Deal spending in the infrastructure package, CHIPS and Science Act, and our favorite, Mr. Mer, the Inflation Reduction Act, which I'm not even going to get into that. As with any massive spending bill, oversight is critical to ensure that funds are being used towards their intended purpose. What has GL learned about the federal government's ability to conduct internal oversight since your last high-risk update, and is the federal government truly equipped to oversee the disbursement of trillions of dollars under such a short time frame? There are additional members, uh, um, areas that I've recommended, both to the Congress and the executive branch, that need to be dealt with. First of all, the agencies need to implement better fraud reduction measures. That's the only real solution to this problem. You really, it's difficult to catch all the people that have committed the fraud afterwards, and then even more difficult to collect the money. So with the agencies, I worked with the Congress back in 2016, we passed this Fraud Reduction Act, and the agencies were slow to implement it, so they weren't very prepared for additional uh, funding. You need better internal controls, better management, more aggressive oversight, and I have about a dozen legislative proposals that right. I have to help deal with this issue going forward. I look forward to receiving that. So uh, thank you for your insight. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in my opening statement, many of the issues we face today began long before the pandemic. The 2023 high-risk report served once again as an alarming reminder of the extent of the improper payment issues facing Medicare and Medicaid. Last year, Medicare improperly paid roughly $47 billion, and Medicaid improperly paid nearly $81 billion. Why do these programs have such massive issues with improper payments? Yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot of uh, factors that contribute to it. In Medicare, what needs to be done is there needs to be more timely measures of the contract audits for Medicare Advantage, which is about half of the spending in Medicare mm -hmm. now. Uh, CMS still hasn't released the audits from the 21 to 2015 or 2011 uh, to 2015 area. So we're way behind in auditing the managed care plans. That's unacceptable, by the way, but, but yeah. Uh, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there also needs to be legislation to allow for recovery auditors, 
which have proven through a pilot to, to do some pre-audits ahead of time. I've suggested more pre-authorizations, which have been studied and may, don't hold up benefits, but provide more program integrity. In Medicaid, I don't believe the estimates as bad as they are, are complete. I don't think we have a good estimate yet of the managed care portion of Medicaid mm -hmm. program. There's a big problem with provider screening and beneficiary eligibility determinations. This was paused during the pandemic. So when, once that resumes, which starts this month, I expect those improper oh. payment estimates to increase, but that needs to be dealt with, and I think the state auditors need to be involved okay. more in providing oversight over that program, which is administered okay. at the state level. Well, thank you. We look forward to your legislative uh, uh, legislative advice, and uh, look forward to this hearing. Uh, 